Welcome back to the channel, guys. Zach here. What I'm gonna be breaking down on this video really is just walking you through. This is my second time doing the 75 hard challenge. I did it a couple years ago, back in 2021, when I originally moved down here in Florida. And now I have done a couple small of the 30 day phases that you have. But if you do not know what the 75 hard challenge is, first of all, if you're thinking about doing it, I highly recommend just get the app. Just get the app. That is where you are going to be able to take photos, keep track of everything. You can set reminders up. But the main things of 75 hard are gonna be a 45 minute workout. It's two workouts, 45 minute workout. And then the second one has to be outside. You gotta take a progress picture every day. You gotta read 10 pages of a nonfiction book. So like some help, self-help book, a sales book, a marketing book anything on those lines, not like uh, the fiction storybooks, right? Drink a gallon of water every day. You need to follow a strict diet and then no cheat meals or alcohol. Now, to be honest, the first time I did this, I had incredible realizations. I had a really good physical transformation, but this program is not a physical type of program or physical type of challenge. The biggest benefits that you are going to get are going to come from the mental side, are going to come from showing up every day and doing the tasks. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit more about my plans for this, my goals for this, why I decided I needed to start it again. And honestly, it's been too long. <laughs> I should have done it again earlier, but we always find excuses. We always find uh, reasons to not start. And to be honest, there is never a perfect time for anything. So. And I will remind you that I will, I have some, some strong ideas about the program as well. And I highly recommend it for everyone, but I'm going to talk about, you know, what I have for the diet, what I have planned for the workouts and just talk about my first week finishing it and giving you guys some insight there, some value there, hopefully motivate you guys to do it as well. And I'm literally here at Publix filling up my gallons of water to start the week because we got to get them gallons in. So. All right, y'all, we are on my second workout, my outdoor workout. I haven't done today. So let's talk about the workouts. Now, when it comes down to it, yes, you got to do two workouts, one inside, one outside, or just two workouts in general. One of them does have to be outside though. A lot of people get caught up on this and they say, Hey, this isn't sustainable. To be honest, from someone that does it and is an athlete and has pretty much been doing two workouts for a majority of the last few years, it is highly sustainable. The difference is, is the fact that you don't have to go and do like crazy high intensity workouts for both of those workouts. You can go on a walk. Depending on your experience with working out and how your body is, that's gonna determine what your workouts are. So if you're just beginning, your body needs to get used to working out, you could do two walks. That is totally a fine. That is totally fine, totally okay. Now I will talk about what my plans are for my workouts and kind of my goals with that because I'm actually gonna start bringing running into it and I hate running and there's a reason why I'm doing it. But with the two workouts, yes, one of them has to be outside. The reason being is Andy talks about how no matter what you have to do it outside, whether there's a rain, there's rain, there's a storm, anything like that because you cannot determine the circumstances that happen in life and that's just like the weather. So no matter what the weather is, you still got to show up and get that workout in. Just remember, it's just 45 minutes, right? Show up, get it done. You absolutely can do it. So the two workouts, one of them does have to be outside. The other one can be a normal workout, but just, just remember that. If you guys haven't already, I highly recommend you start listening to Andy. Andy Priscilla is the creator of the program. He's also the owner CEO of First Form, which is a massive sports nutrition company that he built up for years and years and years. But his podcast is just incredible. I think he's one of the best speakers of our time in terms of talking about business. If you're interested in business, entrepreneurship, just being a better individual, progressing as an individual, treating this life like a game, like he is one of the best because a lot of the stuff he says is true, it's authentic, and it's honest. And half of it is like a punch in the gut. It's like a punch in the face because he says things that we all try to make excuses for, that we all try to find reasons to, to not believe, but they're true. So when you listen to his content and you listen to his podcast and he answers you know, reviewers' questions and he goes through these thought processes, 
you start to have realizations and understand, hey, I need to be better. I need to push myself. And this program is a part of that. This program is a part of creating that type of identity and becoming that type of person. So highly recommend you start listening to him, follow him. He is great to learn from. I've been listening to him for the last three and a half years and one of the best in the game, I'll say that. So let's talk about my workouts. What is my plan with the workouts? How am I structuring it? So if you do not know anything about me already, I am a former Division I athlete. I played baseball at the University of Nebraska, two years at JUCO, two years at the University of Nebraska. So working out is a large part of my life. And honestly, go Big Red Baby because they did just make the NCAA tournament in a long time. So shout out to Nebraska for doing something in the sports world there, making the fans happy. But Either way, um, what I plan on doing is I plan on adding some running into it, and I will tell you why. Now, with my actual workout, I'm going to be doing three days push-pull legs, and I'm going to have one body weight workout. Now, on those days as well, I will be walking outside. The other days, I will plan on running. You guys don't have to do like a specific like hardcore setup like I'm kind of doing. I wouldn't say this is hardcore, but... You can just, you know, have a, a basic workout that you show up, depending on, like I said, your experience level, choose a workout that you think would be good for you to get to your goals, whether that's gaining muscle mass, whether that is cutting down or losing weight, pick something that is going to allow you to do that. But essentially three days, push, pull legs with a body weight workout four days a week. Then I'm going to be walking on those days. Then the days I'm not working out, I'm going to be running kind of these three, three, four miles or so. As of right now, I'm between the two and a half to three and a half miles. And the reason why I added running into it is because I hate it. <laughs> I do not like running uh, whatsoever. And I felt like adding running to the mix would really kind of stress my brain to do something that I do not want to do. So I have to continually show up and do that. And the plan is on Saturdays or Sundays on my weekend run, I'm going to make my weekend run a little bit longer. And then I want to try to hit a PR every single weekend. So I'm continually, you know, breaking a record in my brain, like subconsciously every single weekend. So I'm hoping that, you know, that'll be a good setup for that. And I actually decided at the beginning of the year that I was going to try to get better at running because I hated it. Like I said, because I don't like doing it. I wanted to do something that was harder, that pushed my mind in that way. So in the beginning of January, I just made these small steps. I said, just get up and run a mile a day. So I started running a mile a day. Now we're at two and a half to three and a half miles and just did a PR this past weekend on the first week of 75 hard for like 4.25 miles, which is not crazy, but that is the whole point of choosing these small little goals and these small little tasks and then continuing to do them, show up, you will adapt. It will start to become easier. And then subconsciously you're getting win after win after win by doing that. So you're trusting yourself, you're trusting your word. And that's the importance of starting with the small things, kind of like I did with running. So either way, that is kind of how I am setting up my workouts. When I'm running, I will either walk outside or go to the gym and walk for 45 minutes and then stretch because I'm running. I'm going to have to take care of my body a little bit more and stretch. And I definitely need to work on my mobility. So a lot of things going on from the workout side, but that is how I am structuring it. All right, what about the nutrition? What is my plan for the nutrition? What is it supposed to be for the challenge? We'll talk about that. But first, I do want to say, I've been running in these old Ultra Boosts. They are fantastic shoes, but obviously they are just wearing and tearing. And I asked some friends, they gave me some recommendations, and I finally got some running shoes. So I'm feeling some PRs in these on cloud, on cloud monsters or whatever they're called. I don't even know. Yes, they're a little colorful because I got them at an outlet mall and I got a deal and I'm just a deal chaser. That's just what I do. And I guess with these, I'll be a PR chaser. So we'll see, it'll be fun. But in terms of the nutrition and the diet, with the 75 hard challenge, it is all about having a strict diet plan. This is no cheat meals, get rid of the sugars, get rid of the snacks, get rid of the chips, right? Eating whole foods, vegetables, fruits, cooking your own meals. Make sure that you're cooking the food in like healthy oils, which is avocado oil, olive oil, coconut oil, grass-fed butter. That is where you should put your focus on. So make sure you're eating the whole foods. Majority of your food is coming from, you know, beef, chicken, eggs. I'll talk about what I 
plan on eating and what my nutrition plan looks like. But that is the most important part. Get rid of the snacking, get rid of all of the extra crap that we eat throughout the day. Some people do choose specific diets like Mediterranean, keto, carnivore. That is absolutely allowed. If you want to stick to the diet, it gives you a clear direction of how you want to eat. That's totally fine. For me, because I just started running, I need to have the carb load. Uh, so I'm not sticking to a specific diet because I want to make sure that I'm getting the certain amount of calories in and I'm still kind of gaining muscle mass while running. So I will have to eat more and I will have to eat a lot of protein. If you guys need like a guideline of protein, it should be 0.8 to 1.2 grams per body weight. So essentially if you were just take, you weigh 180 pounds, 180 grams of protein per day, that's a good metric because protein is what is going to build your muscle. So with me, I pretty much eat carnivorous. I get a lot of my carbs from either sourdough bread, rice, or some potatoes, but I don't eat a ton of carbs. I eat a lot of eggs. I pretty much buy these 30 racks, like three to four of these every time I go. I eat a lot of eggs and then a lot of red meat. So ground beef, ground turkey, um, steaks and like chucks I will eat. And I don't like eating a ton of big meals either. I will. I am adding in like Gulf shrimp and I'm adding in some tuna as well from that side because those are high protein and it doesn't require me to eat a ton. So that is my plan with my diet is my meals pretty much look like ground beef and like six eggs or ground beef and shrimp or I'll have tuna, just a couple packets of tuna get 30, 40 grams of protein in. So that is pretty much what my diet is going to look like carnivorous, get my carbs with sourdough bread and rice and put it into my meals, but I'm not sticking to a specific diet plan. But as always, it is more so about being strict, being consistent. Uh, yes, this is actually what I think one of the hardest pieces is, is the diet plan because it does get bland. But if you are gonna use different types of condiments, do zero sugar, do zero sugar or organic, things that are like zero calories or five calories, mustard, as zero calories, you can get zero, like low sugar ketchup. Don't use a bunch of these sauces, so get rid of that stuff, be clean. And, and it's gonna be hard because there is a donut shop that literally just opened up by me. I'm a huge donut fan, I like my sweets. But we're gonna have to lock it in. So, that is the nutrition plans. Last but not least, the gallon of water and reading 10 pages. So first off, with the gallon of water, the biggest struggle that I had was getting in the liquids later on. So if you get them on later in the night, you're gonna wake up in the middle of the night to pee multiple times. So try to get your liquid in earlier in the day if you're looking at doing it. Uh, first off, you should hydrate yourself with like 30 to 60 ounces, like right when you wake up. You can even add a little Celtic sea salt in there. Most people are naturally like really dehydrated. Most people drink a lot of soda and things that, you know, take up the use of water. So drinking a gallon of water is just going to keep you hydrated. It's going to give you a lot more energy and it's just good for your muscles now that you're working out a little bit more. So the gallon of water, try to get it in earlier, the majority of it in earlier in the day, because if you wait too late, and you're chugging half of a gallon, which has happened to me plenty of times before, you're gonna end up waking up in the middle of the night peeing multiple times. Now, when it comes down to the reading, basically what I'm reading right now is Subliminal, How Your Unconscious Mind Rules Your Behavior by Leonard Mladi now. Honestly, it's really sciencey. I got like one chapter left and then I'll be moving on to the next book. I don't necessarily recommend it unless you really like, you know, science dissertations. That's pretty much what it does. There is some good information, um, but not much explanation outside behind the science. Either way, oops, drop that. But if you want other book recommendations, The Slight Edge is a fantastic book. It would fit perfectly with 75 Hard. It talks about the small steps and how, you know, it turns into massive changes. Psycho-Cybernetics. If you have you know, looked into entrepreneurship, most people recommend this because it talks about how a lot of things are internal and not external, things that happen to you. It's actually a really good sales book as well. So Psycho Cybernetics, The 50th Law by 50. I just love 50 and this just talks about kind of the, the greediness of business and, and corporate and it's just really good. And then Andy has his 75 hard book. A lot of the times it is sold out, but it could be a 
you know, very beneficial to read it while you're going through the program at the halfway mark, right? And it talks about all of the different instances and feelings and emotions that you have while you're going through the program because every like a couple weeks, something different changes, right? And then he just had his new book, The Book of Mental Toughness, which I will probably read this next. But really the whole point of the 10 pages is it's meant to put you, to get you first of all, like off of your phone. Everyone is always on their phone looking for the information. People haven't read a book since high school, uh, but there is so much amazing information in books. There's so much successful people that have written books and you can get just really key things out of books. So the, the reading is really just meant to allow you to put your brain towards learning something, towards self-development, towards self-excellence through a nonfiction book that has to deal with that. So really great and 10 pages is not that much. And it's honestly, it feels really good to get away from the computer or the phone when you do have to get that 10 minutes in and read, take care away from that. And so get your pages in. All right, so let's finish up this monologue of week one was 75 hard and let's be a little bit transparent on why I'm doing it the second time. So the reason why I am deciding to do it the second time and I should have done it before. I've done a couple of the small 30 day phases in between, but I'm going back to the original phase one of 75 hard for a reason. And reason being is just over the last year and a half to two years, since the last time I've done it, I felt like I've had this self-fulfilling prophecy. I've kind of uh, really, diminished like a lack of, I've had a lack of self-confidence. I've had a lack of discipline. I've had, you know, a lack of, you know, my habits, a lack of, you know, showing up when I need to, when I don't feel like it. And over time, right, those become bad habits. And I've gotten to the point where I have tried so many things. I've taken a lot of risks. I've done a lot of things where I have been kind of punched in the face. And I think that's kind of built up these bad habits because of just things not going my way. And the only way that I can change that is by creating momentum. And when I did 75 hard the first time, it created momentum. It created habits. The way that I live my life now is largely part of that. You know, I don't go out and drink a ton all the time. I, I rarely go out. I stay in. I learn things. I implement things. But I just didn't feel like the actions I were taking were as consistent and I wasn't disciplined when I didn't feel like it. So that's why I want to start 75 Hard again. And I'm completely committed to it. And that's another piece that I'm going to talk about is Andy talks about it all the time as well is either you're interested or you're committed. The people who are interested who just want to give it a try or give it a go will likely end up quitting. They will likely end up, you know, because they're not committed to it, because they're not too locked into it, they'll likely find a way to cheat or get out of it 20, 30 days in, and then they won't start over. So technically, if you do falter and things happen and you do fail a day, you're supposed to start over at day one. But if you're likely interested in it and you're not committed, you'll likely just, oh, you know, I tried it and you know, I'll do it another time. I'll find a better time to be able to do it. Now, if you are committed to it and you're locked into it, just like I was the first time, I said, you know, there was no doubt in my mind that I'm going to get this done. There's no doubt in my mind that I am going to lock in this 75 days or longer. And because of that, I have been able to create these habits that have helped me, but have really shaped my mentality. But over that time of getting, you know, knocked in the face a few times, like I said, I had built up bad habits and I needed to change them. I needed to flip the coin in my favor and flip momentum in my favor. And that is exactly what I plan on doing. I plan on committing myself to it and sticking to all of these goals. And so the last piece of advice that I would bring to you guys, if you're looking at doing 75 hard or trying it is make sure that you are committed to it, but also make sure that you do not falter or change the core principles of the program. Now this may be a hard take and I do appreciate people that you, you always hear the 75 soft challenge or the 35, you know, soft challenge people changing the core principles of the program. Oh, I'm gonna I can drink every few weeks, or I'm only just gonna do one workout. No, stick to the principles. Don't drink the entire time. See how you feel. It's only 20% of your year that you are. Regine, what's the regiment about? Well, it's about inconvenience, okay? Um, there's a reason for every single one of those items, a very specific reason. Uh, actually, the whole point of the program is to put yourself in the most inconvenient, non-compromising situation that you possibly can, meaning 
there is no room for substitutions here. There is no room for, oh, you know what? I don't feel like it. Uh, I'm going to give myself a break or I'm going to give myself a mental day or all this shit that people are doing now about letting themselves off the hook because letting yourself off the hook is the reason that you are where you are in this state of unhappiness, in this state of unfulfillment. Sacrificing, and it's not even a sacrifice. It's an investment in your own progress, which is why if you're committed to it, you're committed to your progress, your mentality, your mental toughness, because that is what is going to happen. Yes, you're going to see physical changes because you are working out and you're pushing yourself in that way a little bit further than most people are, but a lot of it comes from the mentality. So what I would say is please do the program as it is specified, and I will drop some links down below that you can check out about the program. And maybe I'll throw some videos in here about Andy talking about some of these core principles that are very important with the program. To confidence and it comes to momentum, when you don't have it, you have to manufacture it. And that starts through force. That's one day at a time. I'm going to, this is what the Live Hard program is all about, all right? One day at a time. You're gonna say, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And you do those things. And then they're very hard. And you wake up the next day and you say, fuck, I'm still in this sh shitty situation. I don't have any confidence, I don't feel good. but. I did do what I was supposed to do yesterday, and that's where it starts. It's that would be the last kind of take that I have for you guys. Stick with it. Do all of the core pieces of the program. If you don't cheat yourself, if you do it the right way, if you are committed, you're going to see massive changes. And even the videos that I link down below, look at the comments, see the people that have actually done that and see the progress and the excitement that they have. Because naturally, if you try to change the core principles of the program, that is probably, that is the problem. That's the reason why a lot of us have, you know, anxiety, depression, lack of self-confidence, because we always try to change the outcomes of things. We always try to change things to make them fit our schedule or fit us. It doesn't work that way because no matter what, you're never gonna wake up every day excited, fulfilled, have the energy to get things done. And when things aren't going your way, you still have to show up and get things done. That is life, right? Like uh, Sylvester Stone says. And then you go around the second day and you say, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And you do those things. And then you wake up on the third day and you're like, fuck, I'm still not where I wanna be. But the last two days, I did what I was supposed to do. And then you wake up on the third day and then you wake up on the fourth day. And soon after, you know, when you're 20, 30 days in, you're looking back, you're like, well, shit, I did this for the last 30 days. I can do this. And you start to feel good about yourself. You start to say, dude, I'm, I'm pretty badass motherfucker. I'm someone that can do things. All those things I thought were impossible, now I'm able to do them. And that progresses the longer that you do it. And all the while, you're manufacturing all this momentum. So you're doing these things day in and day out, and day in and day out. It ain't all sunshine and rainbow, kids. So just understand, things are always gonna come your way. You can't change those circumstances, but what you do have control over is your mentality, your mindset, showing up getting the things done when you don't feel like it. And that is exactly what the program is going to bring for me. And I hope that it brings for you. So that is my final monologue to finish out week one of 75 Hard. Let me know in the comments, well, if you're here, like and subscribe, but let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see as I document this. I'm gonna document my process Maybe you guys want to see my workouts or what that looks like or my food. Just let me know what you guys would like insight on because no matter what, every seven to 10 days of this program, you kind of have like a new mental download. And I will be talking about these, especially my second time going through it and the things that I have learned. And I want to be able to provide the most amount of value to you, but I also want to be able to provide and show up for my community of people that I'm helping out with finance, credit, travel hacking there as well. So feel free to keep following along. I appreciate you guys and we will see you on the next one. And eventually those things that on the first day were so fucking hard for you are now just part of who you are. And not only are they part of who you are, you feel great about who you're becoming. And because who you're becoming is a completely different version of yourself that you couldn't even imagine on the first day, all right? This is the reality of how winners operate. Winners understand very simply the confidence and momentum. When we don't have them, we got to go back to the basics and start at zero. And we got to start grinding it out day by day by day by day by day. And we understand that after a certain amount of days, we'll have momentum and we'll have confidence. And we know it so well that we don't doubt it. So when we do find ourselves in these places without momentum, and we do find ourselves in these places without confidence, which happens to the highest level people, they know what to do. And the not knowing what to do is what makes people hopeless.